uh, we can, I could fill up the hour with each one of you, but uh, to have to have three is great. So um, so first, I want to I, I want to welcome everybody to um, uh, our Family Business Friday, uh, our Zoom at noon call. I am actually in a different different location here, but it's, it's worked out well. Going to really see um, some folks that are currently leading and 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 are the future as well of of family businesses. But first, for those that don't know, uh, the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship is at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Our, our focus is really to promote, support, research, veteran, um, urban, student, and uh, family business entrepreneurship. And uh, we do that through writing, through advocacy, through programs, and, and uh, other things. And so we're, we're just very, very excited uh, about everything we do, but especially the family businesses, because it, it just amazes me how little people in influence know about how important family businesses are to the economy, to employment, and so on. And so what I'd like to do is go around and we'll have you introduce yourself. Um, uh, Ryan, if you could do a you know, one minute introduction, that would be great. About sure. Uh, Ryan Sanzeri, um, president of Alfred Sanzeri Enterprises. I'm, uh, I represent the uh, third generation of uh, Sanzeri's in the family business, and we've been operating since 1945. Excellent. Uh, Courtney, what about you? Good afternoon. My name is Courtney Villani. I'm also a third generation of a Villani Bus Company, a school and charter bus transportation company started with my grandfather in 1919. We're in our 102nd year. 102 years. I always, it's just amazing to me that uh, to, to think that. And just three generations in the, the 102 years is, is pretty incredible, too. Dennis, Dennis McCoola. Good afternoon. Uh, Dennis McCoola, McCoola Contracting, uh, also third generation. Um, we just turned 75 years in, uh, this year, and you know we're excavating and demolition contractor. Excellent. The, uh, so next, I want to say, you know, when did you, because so often as I talk to family businesses, you know, folks grow up in the business and say, well, I'm never going to work. this great, but I never going to work there. So, so Courtney, I'll start with you. When did you get a sense that you were going to work in the family business? I was three years old, pushing tires around, thinking I was a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ask me, I was already there full time all the time. Yeah. Uh, my father in six months after 9-11, my father had a, a heart issue and um, some other health issues. And so I, I came over and started helping out a little bit just to relieve the burden, uh, so to speak. He was part of the great generation and he not just had the business, but was the business. Mm -hmm. The business and he were one and the same. And I just felt so appreciative of every opportunity it had given me. And it was so important to him. I, I felt a sense of obligation to you know, do the right thing and help out with the business, not knowing or expecting to like it at all, happening to love it. And so, so what were you doing when you came over to help? Well, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, this is the thing about family businesses. It's not like anybody comes in and they're like, okay, thank you for coming here. This is what we'd like you to do. Here's a clear description of what you should be doing uh, and an expectation, a timeline and all those things. They're like, oh, so-and-so is not here today. Can you do payroll? I'm like, sure. Um, charter, okay. Yeah, dispatch, safety, <laughs> no problem. I'd only like to have six jobs at once, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so a utility player. The, uh, so Dennis, what about you? When did you? Uh, when did you? I know see you the, going? I see the smile on Ryan's face, and we've. I think we've all been through those experiences at Courtney. Yes. Right. Um, same thing. Uh, probably three, four years old. Uh -huh. um, I, the. Um, I, I grew up. This was, you know, my, my sandbox. You know, this is. I everybody had Tonka toys. I had uh, Caterpillar and John Deere uh, that I grew up on, and in. Growing up, I learned a lot of great lessons, you know, from my grandfather and my father. You know, if I wanted to, uh, you know, play baseball and get a baseball mitt, I swept the floors. If I now wanted to get a baseball bat, I, I washed the trucks down and, you know, and, and learned all that from, from the ground up. So very early on, you know, I was involved in, you know, our family business, uh, multiple things. And as it's grown, very similar to what Courtney just said, you kind of just pick up roles as you needed to, you know. Growing up, you know, younger, you know, being a laborer on job sites, 
And then we, you know, I was in the in the '90s putting computers in. Well, that turned into invoicing. That turned into payroll. That turned into everything. Yeah, and then when the websites, you know, started becoming relevant, you know, getting our first company website. So I took that project, and you kind of just go where you're needed in the family business. You, you know, there is no specific, you know, title or role or everything. I find a lot of it is as needed. Like Courtney said, you just kind of pick up what's needed and add value wherever you can. Wonderful. The, and Ryan, what about you? When, when did you know that you were going to kind of jump into this family business thing? A um, lot of similarities to Courtney and Dennis. Um, I have a feeling that's not going to be the first time that uh, I say that today. On, on this call. But um, uh, yeah, I, I was exposed to the, the family business from a young age. Uh, where I'm talking to you from today is Glen Point um, in Teaneck. And uh, I remember being here, you know, as far back as I can remember. I mean, I, I was here, uh, I've seen pictures of myself, you know, uh, crawling around here in, in a diaper and I remember coming here on, on weekends with my father and then um, my godfather is actually the one that really uh, exposed me to a lot of the, the job sites and uh, the construction aspects of, of what um, our, um, our business does and what we do. Um, so teenage years, like Dennis, I, I was a laborer uh, you know, working for uh, whatever money they were willing to pay me, picking up sheet metal and, and uh, throwing down sweeping compound and <laughs> trying not to make, you know, the space. Uh, I just a quick story. I remember like my first day, I didn't know what sweeping compound was. They said, clean up the space. And my friends and I are just sweeping. And then they walked in, they couldn't even see three feet in front of them because there was so much <laughs> dust. They're like, what the hell are you guys doing? So anyway, um, that, but that was really, more for like you know the beer money back then it was wasn't really uh connected to any sort of passion or, or long-term plan i um decided to join the family business not until i was about 22 years old mm -hmm. um at that point i had taken the lsat i was a poli sci major and i was all but certain that i did not want to go into the family business Interesting. and um everything else just didn't seem to be working out the way that I had hoped. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. And um, I ended up falling in love with it. All those years where I was being exposed to it when I was younger, ended up coming full circle back around. And a, a lot of that stuff that maybe I, I took for granted, I definitely took for granted and uh, didn't really value that much when I was younger, it actually stuck. And I ended up, uh, you know, falling in love with it. Well, one of the things, so I have a, a show called Family Business World. Dennis and Courtney have been on it. Um, Ryan, I want to get you on the on the show. And 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 I talked to so many different family businesses. We've had, you know, like 50 shows. And when the folks start out sweeping floors, doing things when they're young, they can go off and do something else, but they're more likely to come back because they value the business. See, the hard work you were doing then, you realize, and so now I'm in charge of this thing that I was sweeping floors when I was five years old. And so that's, for those of you who have a family business, that is so important to know is that don't start them out as a senior VP, you know, really get them work in the business and work every aspect of the business. And uh, it's, it's amazing how consistent that is, you know, and, and people that, that don't do that are, are so anxious to sell the business. So let's go around. So what is the business? So Courtney, what, what, do, you, what do you folks do? And then Dennis school, and then Ryan. School and charter bus transportation. We can take you around the corner or from coast to coast. Yellow and, buses or motor coaches. And so you have contracts with school districts. You have yes. private contracts. And, and, and how many buses do you have? How, you know, well. A hundred-ish. Uh, I mean, I was so, when I went to your place, I was so impressed with how big <laughs> uh, of this family business is. It's pretty, pretty sizable, pretty significant. And so Dennis, what does what Makula Contracting do? So we're an excavation and demolition contractor. Uh, we work for a lot of environmental consultants and builders and developers in the state. You know, we work both commercial and, and residential clients. So, um, yeah, I just want to add something you said. Interesting. We were talking about sweeping the floors and everything. And with Courtney and Ryan, I think there's a lot of pride, too, when you come back having your name on the business. You know, you see you see your buildings, you see your yep. buses, you see your equipment out there. 
and you, I, I always go back to, you know, when we're, when I see our equipment on our sites for what we're doing, I think there's a lot of, a lot of pride that goes into that, but that started in the younger years. Mm-hmm. So. The, uh, and so Ryan, what, you know, so they're, they're, they're kind of two major Sanzari companies in New Jersey. So what, t- let's talk about, talk about the, the business that you're in. Yeah. So, um, a common, um, you know, uh, mix up, if you will, uh, that I get a lot is, is, uh, oh, you know, I see you guys all over the highways and, you know, you, you created the traffic jam that made me late for work today, <laughs> things like that. And that's actually not our company. That's that's Joe Sensary Construction. Um, so they, they do all the major highway work and uh, probably see their name um, a little more than you'll see ours. So we're commercial. Uh, they're cousins, right? They're related. They're related. They're, they're cousins. They're we related. are. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, we are cousins, um, but very um, separate businesses. But mm-hmm. yes, cousins, uh, close, good, rela- good relationship between the companies. But um, yeah, so Alfred Sensary Enterprises, we do commercial real estate development um, and management um, so everything that we own today and manage, for the most part, we have built ourselves. We're not a contractor for hire. Mm-hmm. So uh, while we do uh, construct and develop our own buildings and we build out spaces for tenants and have a construction department, um, at least to date, we have not been a uh, contractor that you would approach you know, to build something for you. Um, it's, you know, similar to to Dennis, um, you know, excavating or wh- whatever that contractor or subcontractor subcontractor may specialize in. So that's basically it. Uh, yeah, uh, commercial, residential, and hospitality are the uh, real estate uses within our portfolio. And, and hotels, you have. Uh, uh, what hotels do you have? We have three hotels. Uh, they're all right here in Teaneck. Uh, we have a Marriott and a dual branded hotel, which is, it looks like one hotel, but it's two in one. And that's a Hampton Inn and Suites and Homewood Suites. Wonderful. The, uh, and, and as I said, I mean, one of the, one of the things I'm trying and, and Sue Slavin and, and our office really, uh, really put out this, this uh, social media thing to take a picture with the family business, support a family business, take a picture with the family business. And so my goal is to like spend all my money just with family businesses. So, you know, so uh, if we can try to do that and try to support that. And so, uh, so, so as you, um, um, as you, as you think about, um, there's a professor online, uh, Scott Livingood is a professor at Arizona State University. And he and I talk about the entrepreneurial mindset. And all three of you have this entrepreneurial mindset, this, this mindset of, of growth, this mindset of doing. And so um, how do you cultivate that? In, in your companies? How do you cultivate this entrepreneurial mindset? Because if you don't change, you're moving backwards. So you have to adapt to what's going forward. So talk to me about that, any one of you. A lot of my, a lot of my guys and girls in our office have their own businesses. Mm, okay. And so I welcome that. You know, one, a couple of the girls are creative and do um, like crafty things. So like bring it on in, have the guys in the shop cut it out. You know, I don't, um, it's not about managing the minutes and, and hours. It's about giving them the space to do what they need to do. And if they get something else done for them as, at the same time, then good for them, good for us. You know, we all work hand in hand together. They knock it out of the park for me. So it's the least I can do to do my best for them and be supportive. Wonderful. The, uh, Dennis, you're always looking forward and so on. How do you, how do you cultivate that? I think, and then you have a, you know, you're open, you're open to ideas. Like you're, you know, like, I know like Courtney and, and Ryan probably you never stop learning every single day we're on the job. We're learning, you know, we're learning from our employees. We're learning from our clients. We're learning from our family. We're learning from, and, and having, you know, that willing to change, willing to be open mindset. So if somebody again, walks into your office and has a suggestion, has an idea to be willing to listen to them to show your continue to grow. I think mean, it's the hardest thing, and, and I'm sure everybody on this panel can talk about it. But going, you know, from generation to gener- two, generation one to two, two to three, three to four, you know, there's a lot of things in our businesses that have been done very well for a very long time. But you need to continue to adapt and change in order to keep up with, you know, 
not only your competition, you just want to keep up with everybody out there as, as far as um, your growth mindset. So I, I think there's a million ways to do something, but listening to everybody has been what we've been, tr- we've been doing for years and taking the best ideas and, and being willing, being able to, you're going to fail on some of these ideas. I mean, we, we all have, you know, you're going to fail on something you try, but you just keep moving forward. You just keep pushing forward. So that's kind of, you know, what has helped us get through the generations. Ryan, what about you? You know, keeping this entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah, um, definitely agree with everything that was just said. Um, Certainly instilling um, a a sense of ownership um, across your organization, um, regardless of what your last name is, and really making, um, not only uh, communicating this, but really um, backing up your words by um, giving your your team members the the tools, the support, the resources that they need to feel like they're really part of this organization or a organization um, today and looking ahead. And um, um, yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you know, it may be my family's name that's that's on the door, but it, it, it wouldn't be up there for, for very long, um, if not for the, you know, several owners of the company, if you will, that, that we certainly um, try, to, uh, try to have with our team, you know, so really making them um, feel like that they, they are a part of this because they are, and, and without them, you know, we're going to fail and, and that we're all in this together. Yeah, um, if I can just share one thing. So Dennis, you said about the learning something new every day. My father was had a penchant for that and a passion for learning something new every day and using it and sharing it. So he, you know, cut out little pieces of newspaper, write in pencil on the edge and parameters, and you know, make sure everybody had a little note of something so that they could also absorb something new. But also, my high school band director had four letters above his band room door, and it was C A N I for constant and never ending improvement. And so every day I try to think, what can I do to better the situation, better myself? And when somebody comes with a problem to me that I don't necessarily see an answer to because I'm not always gonna see all the answers. Okay, what should we do? Is what I, what do you suggest? You see it better than I do if you're dealing with it on the daily. Tell me, if you're having a problem, then you're probably one of many. So tell me what you think I should do and, and see if we can make it happen. And I, I remember my cousin one time I was, fixing up some like dispatch papers for our drivers. And every day it went in the same order. This is how we do this. And he came and he, he moved something. And I was like, he said, you know, this isn't the only way to do it. I said, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Epiphany, right? Like, <laughs> right, right. The, uh, that's, I love constant and never ending improvement. That's, that's, uh, that really is, and it's more important now, I think, than ever. And so, uh, just so you know, so if you hear some back, you know, Courtney is all these, all these, all three are in high demand. But Courtney has a a one to three panel that she's going to with which chamber? The Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce. And, and so she, Elizabeth, yeah, so she's there early, and so you'll hear some background noise. And Sorry so about on. that. That's why I keep muting. No, that, that's okay. No, no, that's no that's uh, that's good. So, yeah. so yeah, Ryan, picking up on what you said. So, you know, people know your businesses. You have the last name. When you grew up, you know, and, 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 and unless you work with family businesses, you don't really understand how hard it is. You know, I think people out there think, oh, family businesses, you know, the millions just fall into your pocket. You know, it's so easy. And so when you work with them, you realize how many hours. I mean, this is a 24-7 job. But as you're growing up, how do you deal with your name, your last name, which is a blessing and a curse? It's like, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, spoiled. He can do all sorts of mistakes because he's. How have you guys personally dealt with that growing up? Um, well, right or wrong, and just you know, to in the interest of being totally transparent and a- answering that question, I, I really just downplayed um, it to the best I could. Um, anytime I was in a situation where where my my name would uh, have any sort of um, impact on. Uh, or in my mind, have an impact in someone's perception of me. You know, I, I may not, for example, when I was working as a laborer, you know, I, I didn't tell any of the carpenters that I was working with 
my last name. And it, it was, wasn't until one day, like two months into the summer where my dad came on to the job site and spoke to me. And the guy who I was working for um, said, how do you know that guy? I said, oh, that's my dad. He goes, that's your father. So, I, you know, that was kind of um, it in a nutshell for me. You know, I really, I, I did not um, and do not today uh, really like the attention. Um, it's, um, you know, even if I did, um, you know, I'm not going to stand behind the accomplishments of, you know, people who and my family and, and the company that came before me, you know, when I haven't even done a damn thing to deserve, you know, a shred of recognition. So I, I really have and, and had um, then just sort of downplayed it, um, tried to avoid it um, at all costs. And then when, as I grew up and, and, you know, started realizing more and more how, you know, people are going to have their um, opinions and, and perceptions mm -hmm. that you just can't control, you know, what other people think. And at the end of the day, you know, people probably aren't thinking about you all that much. We, you know, we all have our own, um, things to worry about and just focus on what you can control and just, you know, keep your eyes forward. What about you, Dennis? Your, your dad, I think is watching and uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, <laughs> we grew up in, in, in Clifton and, you know, our family business has been in Clifton our, you know, my entire life, three generations, 75 years. And I think, you know, when I was younger, again, I think, you know, I, I had a pride and then it was interesting because going through high school and I starting to look at schools and starting to figure out what path I wanted, the amount of people that, you know, guidance counselors, coaches would be like, oh, why are you looking at that? You're just going to go into the family business anyway. And I think a lot of people assume that, you know, you're just, you're just going to go. My advice to anybody in family business is to step out of it for a little while kind of say get you know work for everybody you guys both shaking your heads we all know work for somebody else get different opinions get different ideas and come back in but I think a lot there's always assumption that you're going to you know the name you're going to carry on um, I'm here because I want to be here you know I, I had opportunities you know I was a, a I was a coach for a while I could have taken that path I could have won that but I'm here because you know the pride and I was talking about before the pride in the last name continuing it you know, taking it from the second generation to the third generation and moving it forward here because we all want to be here, you know, and it, like, you know, I think and Ryan had a great point. There's always going to be a lot of noise, um, you know, but it, it's just keeping, keeping focus, growing, moving forward, you know, and, and a lot with the family businesses is I think the hardest is, the, you know, from the founders, you know, from the first generation to the second generation to the third, we all want to put our marks on the business while still, working forward with the, the work ethic that started with generation number one, or else we all wouldn't be here in these businesses. You know, we might have our own, it might be something else, but that's the biggest thing that I see, you know, is, is, as far as, um, you know, the, the last name, the, the pride in it. And I know we all do because we all have the names attached to our businesses. Well, but, but also I think it's important for the audience that doesn't know, and I'll let you speak Courtney is that, you folks could be spoiled. And so you are among the nicest people I know. You care about people who are struggling. I mean, really, it, it really, and I, and I underscore that, you know, because, because you really could be different people, but you genuinely are people that actually care. And that's why you're three of my favorite people. And I think it's important. Courtney, you were going to say something? Yes, very similarly. I used to joke around and still joke around that I used to be a person. I used to have a life before I came to work full time at the business. And I also, whenever I went anywhere, I never gave my last name because I wanted to be treated as a person, not just an entitled person. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see how they treated my guys that I showed up with. And on several occasions, you know, they saw the name tag and let me go right through. And the two guys that I came with were stuck. And I said, mm -mm. Mm -mm. not me without them. Yeah, good, good. And that's who you, that's who you are. And so, the other thing that if you work with family businesses, you realize there is probably no better organization to work for than a family business because it's better than nonprofits. It's better than government. 
because but but the the, the stereotype is oh you you use people no I, you, you folks do so much more so talk about that you all treat because you know how important employees are talk about some of the some of the, some employee stories for the audience well i think people outside of family businesses think that unless they're members of the family then <laughs> they don't realize <laughs> <laughs> that was a pleasure. I got to know and respect my mother and father as people and individuals, not just as mom and dad. We always take mm -hmm. mom and dad for granted, um, even unknowingly. Yep. But you see how much they went through in any given day mm -hmm. and how much they put away mm -hmm. to come to the table and focus on what they love the most is their family. Mm -hmm. And that to me was like the gift that I'm most grateful for. The, uh, but now you also do great stuff for your employees, the non-family employees. So talk to, talk to me about that, talk to, you know, because I know you, you do some, some great things. We just try to be understanding and, and flexible. Um, so from the beginning, my father, like I said, was part of the great generation, but he was always into essentially like flex time before it was a thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the ladies in the office were ladies in the office, working mothers. And the priority is family. So it's not about managing the minutes or hours, like I said before. It's about making sure that people have the opportunity and the leeway and the flexibility to do what they need to do. And put if we put them first and tr treat them with respect, um, because they're doing their everything for us. So why wouldn't we do everything we can for them as well? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what, what happened here. That's weird, is that? Someone sharing that? Is it? No, that's weird. The um, now, what about Dennis? What about you? What are some of the you and I have been talking about implying and your apprenticeship program? Talk a little bit about what you're doing for the non-family employees. So I, I think it's interesting because you know when we were up for family business of the year, we were you know I was looking at a couple of different avenues, and one of the things that's you know, family members you have a lifetime, <laughs> you you're in it for life. But it was really interesting looking back at the average tenure of our non quote unquote Makula family member. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, you know, anybody that's been with us for over a year, you know, it was, I think it was 18 or 19 year average tenure, you know, wow. for non family. And that's what we are most proud of. You know, you, you talk about, you know, if you're looking at your employees, you know, when, when we come to renew our health plan, right. My wife and my daughter are on the health plan that I'm renewing for everybody in our program you know, every, everybody here in our, in our business. So you look at it, if you look at everybody as family, to me, I think it's, it's easy, you know, safe, safety is very important with us. You know, we're a heavy equipment contractor we're out there every day. There's excavation, demolition, there's sites. And I've heard my father say it a thousand times, the number one thing is you come back home safe every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's to every single employee. If it's not safe, we're not doing a job, you know? And again, if there's anything, it's, you hear some stories out there in all of, all of our industries and different, everyone is treated the same. Everybody's treated as if they are family because they are, it makes it easy. You know, if you look at everybody under one whole umbrella as a, as a family, that's, that's why it's, it's, you know, like Ryan says, you know, I kind of feel sometimes, right. How did it get to the third generation? You know, because it, this was instilled in the generations before us, this was instilled, you know, from my father up, you know, my grandfather to him, you know, looking at everybody, you know, as a family member and such an important part and ideas too. You know, you're not just taking ideas from family, you're taking ideas from everybody that walks in. You know, hey, I have a suggestion to do this better. We can make this safer. We can make this more efficient. You listen, you implement it, you try. Not all of them work, but you give that open forum. And I think those are the little things. It's not always salary. It's listening to your employees' needs. You know, everybody wants to make more money out there. Everybody wants more, but a lot of times it's just, being open, listening, listening to what your employees have to say, and then trying to implement that. Wonderful. Appreciation Ryan, and expression of appreciation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well said, Courtney. Ryan, what about you? You know, you have a lot of long-term employees. Yeah, yeah, we certainly did. By the way, so I, I uh, someone um, uh, I work with asked me to take a, a screenshot um, so we could, so she, you know, she works um, on our uh, marketing team. So um, okay. I tried to do that before and I, was like, I think I'm sharing my screen. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna stop That's right. pressing buttons. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, we've got, I, we've been incredibly fortunate and lucky to have uh, 
uh, really a, a family, you know, within the family business. Um, and, and that's the most commonly um, used words when describing like the culture within our office and our, our, our company. Mm -hmm. um, we've got several employees uh, active who have been with us for at least 15 years. Um, we just last week, we, uh, uh, you know, sadly uh, said goodbye to uh, an employee who was uh, with us for 22 years and wow. uh, she retired. We obviously are very happy for her, but um, you know, it was, it was just um, incredible. You know, when, when you have these, these moments to sort of stop, reflect and realize you know, how special something like that is and to see the emotions of um, both her and, and my father and, and a lot of my colleagues when we were saying goodbye to her, you know, it just is a reminder like, wow, this, you know, this really is uh, a special um, place in its own right as, as I'm sure, you know, Courtney and Dennis's companies and so many others are as well. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I think what was said already by uh, Courtney and Dennis, um, you know, I, I completely agree with, um, you know, so not to belabor it, but um, yeah, really uh, in keeping the employees as um, part of, you know, this ownership team, um, the best of your ability is just, you know, I, I can't stress it enough. It's one thing to put up the, the suggestion box or put out the suggestion box, but it's another thing if you're not going to take those suggestions and actually, you know, follow up and, um, you know, implement some of them, you know, otherwise, you know, that uh, the, the amount of su suggestions that are submitted are going to start to dwindle and, People are going to think, you know, am I really, you know, part of this? Am I really, you know, I know they say that and, and, you know, it sounds nice, but, um, you know, how real is that? So, you know, the, the action side of things is uh, more important than, than uh, you know, what is said. Well, and one of our other family business partners was saying they had someone retired after 25 years and said, you know, I kind of woke them up. That's what the business is all about. You know, people, families have good jobs. You change families you know, jobs that they, they, they love and they, that does, that changes the, their, their life. And so that's, that's really an important, you know, an important part of it. So now all three of you, I know were impacted heavily by the pandemic. You've been able to work through and, and um, you know, what, what have you learned from the pandemic? And, and if you want to share some of the challenges you had, you know, what are you going to do differently as we, as we come through this, you know, hopefully knock on wood out of this pandemic in 2022? Improve communication. That's always something. No matter how much you do, you're always doing 50% of what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, you know, be, even before COVID, so I have a son who's three and a half. And when I was 20 weeks pregnant, I lost my mom and I lost my father three weeks before his first birthday. Um, so uh, all that being said, I, of course, wish I could have them here every day with me but I'm grateful for the relationship and the good time that we did have together. I take a quality relationship uh, unfortunately cut short versus a strained or difficult relationship. So, um, and they're always with us no matter what. Right, right. And absolutely. I'm sorry, I just saw somebody that I haven't seen in ages and it was wonderful to see him and he was a good friend of my father's and it's just, right. sorry, it just happened at the right moment, you know? So yeah. sorry about that. Um, but through that, our team has come together so much and they're so protective of me sometimes people have a hard time like they feel like they don't want to bother me right so to your point about the suggestion box i'm like it's crickets up here what's going on where is everybody's feedback tell me what's happening and i can't be downstairs at dispatch every day when everybody's coming and going to see and hear and you know really have an eye on it as much as i need to be um it's just different roles at different times right so i was reaching out to some of my drivers this year and they're like you know it's it's been a year and a half since some of them have had to drive because their district was closed maybe they weren't able to because of child care and the only thing is that communicate 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 until they're sick of hearing from you and listen 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 like you've both said and have faith because i can't promise the world i'm never going to 
I'd rather under promise and over deliver any day of the week. And I can't always do everything, but I will always do my best. And so as long as my people know that, that I'm going to continue fighting for them and with them, and that I've got their back, then I really feel fortunate because I know that they have mine. Um, you've heard the school bus shortage out there right now, and most contractors are operating at a 20% deficit daily, unable to meet 20% of their. Wow. And I'm so grateful, I'm talking on anything that might be wood, so grateful to say we're operating at over 100%. Wow. And well, wow. and it's it's because of great people, mm -hmm. great people, and it's you know it's a little rusty coming back, you know. So it takes people a little bit, a little bit of time to figure out what's where they, you know, how to get back into the swing of things. But just a sincere appreciation and reaching out and communication. Well, it's funny. I, I've been doing consulting for twenty years, and and even in big companies, when the leadership has a certain culture, it permeates the whole organization especially with a family business. And so Courtney, I know with your, your style and your culture, your approach, you know, your approachableness and as makes that, that culture and Dennis and, and Ryan, the same thing. So Dennis, what, what, as you come out of this pandemic, what have you learned and, and how do you view, view things differently? You know, I, I think number one, going through the pandemic, you know, from, from a family business standpoint was, you know, everybody's safety, their health and their safety. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, father in the business, a brother in the business, uncles in the business, you know, so it, among, you know, how are we going to come out of this safe? I, and then I think it's two things. I think it's efficiency. You know, I think there were some things during the pandemic, you know, kind of like, Courtney, how can we do things a little more efficient now, you know, and with the communication, right? And flexibility, you know, we've had, you know, We've had the ability to be flexible, different, you know, and, and look at different things and different ways we could handle things, whether it's in the office or out on the field, right? I mean, there's always different ways again. So, but no, I think coming out of it, it really had you take a look at your entire process, right? Were we able to be said, is this the last time this, how would we handle it differently? You know, the one thing we wouldn't handle differently is how everybody was safe. You know, we kept everybody, you know, again, you know, Everybody during the pandemic, we were as safe as we could possibly be, but there are definitely things we found out, ways we can improve our flexibility and efficiency in our overall process. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, that's, um, that's great. Ryan, what about you? Coming out of this, what's, um, what have you learned? <clears throat> um, I don't know if <laughs> we have enough time for um, <laughs> me to go through everything I've learned, but just a, a, a couple things, I mean, perspective you know one thing i've certainly learned is that you know we're we're not you know you grow you grow up as we were saying before you grow up you know with this last name and with um this uh um reputation that comes along with your your respective family and, and success and and um that's all you know good and great in one hand and then you go through something like the pandemic and you realize like wow we're we're not invincible you know for mm -hmm. for the first time since i've been at the company i mean it, it was really uh like a, a, re, a reality check i mean you know that people can stop coming to to buildings or hotels or you know empty we went from collecting revenue to just writing checks to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. So that perspective and um, that lesson, I think is really important for, certainly for, for me and um, at, at this point in, uh, in my professional and personal life, um, just understanding that, you know, you, you, can, um, you can lose something um, if you're, you know, even, even you could be doing all the right things. And I mean, think about how many businesses and, and lives were, you know, completely destroyed and, and disrupted by the pandemic. So really valuing what we have, um, the certainly as um, I believe Dennis had said, the resiliency and the adaptability um, of our, of our team and our company, uh, you know, I've, to, if someone were to have told me 10 years ago that, you know, there's going to be an event that takes place that is going to cause us to all work completely remotely, 
you know, I, I would laugh out loud because that, that thought it, it, that was, that would just be, you know, a, a, a joke in my mind, but to see um, us able to um, adapt and, and, and perform at the same time was really encouraging, but I definitely think the the perspective that I walked away with um, was probably the most significant thing. So what advice, we have a number of family businesses and, and small business owners who, who watch this now or watch the tape of this. So what advice, you know, you, you're all experienced leaders now. You know, you've had many years under your belt, you've uh, experienced, so if you're running a, um, and your businesses are larger than a lot of family businesses, but, but uh, what advice, you know, would you give to people or would you give to yourself knowing what you know now as you were starting? What have you learned? I don't know if we have enough time. Like, <laughs> the, uh, oh, yeah, one or two things that stand out. You know, I, I think what I've learned through the years is there are multiple ways to do, you know, to improve your process. Yeah. If there's one thing, you know, yeah. You know, looking back, you know, maybe when I was a little younger saying, oh, this, you know, you come in, this is the way I want to make this change. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes you overlook what has been successful. Yes, there's no, more ways to make it more efficient. But looking back, like, you know, we all try and again, I think it's it's in the family. We try to put our mark on it. So looking back, I wish I, you know, if I, if I had to change one thing, looking back, it was completely understand the process of whatever the function was before trying to make a suggestion of a change, you know, and, and then just tweaking it that way. Um, and, and I think, you know, something I, I probably, the second thing is, is get outside perspective, outside of your family business, outside of, of your, your family, get out there, talk to other businesses. You know, I'd love to have a, you know, sit down a coffee or lunch with Courtney and Ryan. How, how did you guys handle this? What's it? We're all in, you know, we're, we're all, we're in, but we have different perspectives of how we handle different things. So I think that's very important. That's something that, that's a number one advice. Get out there and talk to people. Talk to people that have been there. Listen to people that have been there. You know, I'm very fortunate. I'm in, I'm in the office with my father every single day. He's been through this all. You know, how did you handle this? How should we handle it? put our minds together, but get an outside perspective as well, I think is something, you know, that I would advise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, Courtney, what do you think? Um, yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, one of the um, dangers, if you will, of uh, a family business is uh, lacking external uh, view um, in, in more ways than one. And um, if I were to go back or if I were to be giving someone advice today, absolutely. I, I think that's so important to be, be getting advice from as many people um, as possible and then um, establishing and, and, and formulating your, your own um, opinion going forward based off you know, what, what you've learned internally um, and what you can gather um, externally to, um, you know, make the best de decisions uh, possible. Um, also, you know, something Dennis said that I thought was interesting was that understanding that, you know, it, it, it's funny, it, it kind of works both ways, meaning like the, the younger generation um, should not think that because they've got, you know, meaning me in this case, should not think that um, I, I know the best way when for 76 years, you know, this company has been successful doing it another way. So understanding that you don't know everything, I mean, that's, that's a lesson that can apply to anyone in any situation um, is very important. But also, if you're the, you know, the older generation or the, the second generation in, in our company's case, um, speaking with the third generation, you know, maybe there is a different way to do it than we've always done it. You know, some, um, and I know Courtney was talking about this before, but I hate the words, well, that's the way we've always done it. Right. right. Yeah. That's just the way we've always done it. Yeah. So um, I, I think there, there's definitely something to be said about um, being 
flexible and, and, and willing, um, being open-minded on, on both ends of that spectrum. That's uh, really powerful. Courtney, what do you, what do you say? Uh, planning and communication. Uh, mm -hmm. Make a plan, make a plan, make a plan. Expect it to change 900%. Be ready to change with it and be fluid. Don't be all, ah, the sky is falling. Nobody cares what chicken little thinks. Nobody cares. Don't be the chicken little. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be around chicken little. So, <laughs> you know, just things are going to change every day. Roll with it. You know, you're the river or you're the rock. You know, so you have to deal with things as they come expect the changes plan 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 um i was a firefighter for 10 years and people think that it's like a you know you just run a building no everything is a pre-plan right. nothing goes as planned but everything right. is a pre-plan you know they go they check out a building okay this is how we're going to hit the hydrants this is we're going to go into the standpipe system this is how we're going to attack it on, based on what floor it's on and of course it's going to change every scenario is going to be different every day every hour depending on millions of variables but if you have a plan, you've already worked through X percent of it. Mm -hmm. And over communication, like I said about the small businesses, private businesses, we never had job descriptions. I only knew what they were because I was stuck doing them. So as I was going through them, I wrote it up. I'm like, what do I do every day? I don't know. You know, and somebody asked me what my job title was. I didn't have one until I was president. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I make sure the buses get out every day, whether I'm in my dress and washing a bus or I don't know what, it doesn't matter. We're just getting the job done. Mm -hmm. But changing from that reactive to proactive mm -hmm. and you need the right people to, to have that. And people work better and, and feel more comfortable when they know what's expected of them and what we need from them. So communication and planning, communication and planning, including your own stuff, make your time to make a life. Mm -hmm. Make no. your time to make a life. I was working 12 to 16 hours a day. And every day, one of my guys was like, more hours is not better for you or the company. And I was a quick learner. So it only took me, you know, like 10 or 12 years before I caught on. But I caught on. The, uh, very, very, very well said. And so, so the future, you know, are there innovations that you're thinking of? What, uh, Dennis, as you look at Makua, what, what do you and your family think about the, the future. Do you have any, any new innovations or other things that you're looking at going forward? Every day. I mean, I mm -hmm. think that's, that's, that's part of, you know, the, the growth mindset, you know, okay. different things, you know, different yep. uh, revenue streams, you know, different um, a a avenues, you know, for us to, um, you know, how do we expand our business, you know, or an arm of our business that's something, you know, similar to what we do, you know, which is, offer a different product, a different service out there. So I think that's an ongoing thing. That's part of what I, you know, I guess, you know, one of the roles like Courtney said, other than, you know, our, our actual titles, you know, is business development. Okay. We're, we're, we're providing this service. One of our clients needs this service. Can we also provide that for them? You know, I think that that's growth, you know, um, what we're looking to, you know, innovation, you know, in our, the construction industry is, is where it's come from where I was a kid. So now with the satellites, the GPS and everything, I think just keeping <laughs> up with all of that, um, you know, is a lot, you know, whether it's our computer systems, whether it's our job trackers, every different things we do, you know, I'm always trying to stay ahead of the curve. And every time you research something, it's three steps ahead of you. So I think that's, that's part of, our, you know, what we're looking into. Well, well, you mentioned the growth mindset. And so again, Professor Living Good, mm -hmm. Scott and I were talking yesterday, I think it was, uh, about the the fix they have something called the fixed mindset which is basically you know i'm just gonna nothing's gonna change and you have the growth mindset which is individual and i can grow and so on but then we talk about the entrepreneurial mindset is that the growth mindset you grow yourself which is essential but the entrepreneurial mindset is you want to grow your business right. and so and really and so what you know we're trying to help people through that process and it's, it's it's actually very helpful as you are trying to look at even the next leaders in your organization so so Ryan, what about you? What's in the future? You have a lot of different holdings and, and, and uh, real estate is, you know, um, is this is an interesting time for real estate. Yeah. Um, you know, thinking ahead, I, uh, I think I speak for uh, more than just myself when I say that we just, we want to continue to get better. Um, I know the, the word growth is the most commonly 
used one when, when the question of the future comes up, but uh, improvement, I mean, is, is really um, the, the focus in the, you know, short, ter short to long-term future mm -hmm. even. Um, I, I'm now trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, there's so many great aspects um, of our company that have been established, you know, three quarters of a decade, uh, three quarters of a century ago, mm -hmm. and, you know, still are the pillars of our company today. So, um, but I'm also not trying, as Courtney had said, you know, I'm not trying to be the rock. Um, definitely maintaining that, that fluid nature and, and, and staying um, like water to, to take shape around, you know, whatever comes our way is, is certainly important. But yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm sure we, we all do. You know, you wake up every day and you've got three billion ideas running through your head and, and you know, you want so desperately to, to even see, you know, just a couple of them come to fruition. So um, I've certainly got, you know, my uh, brain filled with thoughts and ideas, but um, right now, you know, I'm just uh, focused on doing my best um, as part of a bigger team to just keep on uh, improving every day. Uh, I know that's kind of a boring answer, but it's no, the truth. it's the truth. It's, it's the truth. And so, so according to the bus industry, in fact, I think the governor of New Jersey uh, talked about some electric buses that they're putting in. And, and so there's a lot of changes. So what about you? What's, what's the future of Villani Bus Company? You know, keep on rolling along, slow and steady. Be mm -hmm. the tortoise, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people, when you're speaking about growth, Ryan, you know, fast growth is easy, but substantiated growth is difficult. And that, right. that takes work and time. So, you know, uh, piacere, piacere, it's just step by step, little bit by little bit, and um, not biting off more than you can chew. And in fact, if you would ask me how many vehicles we had earlier, you asked me that, and I, mm -hmm. I think I had a number in my head, right? But we had downsized since in the past couple of years to trying to make it make sense for the business. Mm -hmm. And if you would ask me 10 years ago if I wanted to do that, I would have been like, absolutely not. We want to take right. over the world, right? right. <laughs> but you, you want to do things well. Mm -hmm. uh, safety, number one priority. Uh, I, I really believe for school bus transportation, it should be hyper-local. Mm -hmm. um, I think the electric bus situation is a real tangible thing that's happening in real time right now, and it'll happen to districts. Mm -hmm. It'll happen uh, for airports, uh, shuttles, transit, things like that. It is not anywhere near feasible yet for contractors, private contractors. There's maybe, there's one small private contractor in the state, one, wow. who wow. started, who ordered a couple. And the order doesn't mean it's actually gonna happen and come to fruition because you have to have your infrastructure in place first. And you have to, there's a lot of hoops to jump through to get there. So it's um, it's not as easy as just, you know, getting a Tesla and a charging station, right? right so right. it's a it's a whole different thing. And, and to be honest, they don't have it really, um, they don't have the future of what to do with disposable, disposing the batteries or anything like that yet. Not, nothing's right. set up. So, right. you know, it's, it's happening. Um, and alternative sources of fuel are important to have and look into, you know, always have to look with an open eye and say, okay, what's next? What's new? What am I not doing? Right. And sometimes different technologies, people are always coming at you with some kind of, you know, gadget or gizmo that's going to, I'm going to make your contracting business easy. All you have to do is, right? right and right. you're like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate that. We got that covered, you know? Like, so it's uh, whatever it is, it's, it's always, you just have to look at things, give it time to soak in and, and see what's happening for the future. You know, my son's three and a half. I want to make my business viable today, tomorrow, and in the future. Yeah. Should he decide to go this route? Good on him or he's crazy enough to do it. I don't know. And if he doesn't, I'm happy to support him going into a normal business. That's right. totally fine. But absolutely, whatever it is, you know? The, um, so, so good, we were almost at the, at the end of time, but I'd like you each to go, um, if you could give your website, because you, your businesses are so fascinating, you know, so people can find your website. So, so Dennis, we'll start with you. Give your website and talk about some of your community service initiatives. I have to, I have to step, step away just for a second, but but your website and community service initiatives, and I'll be right back. Sure. 
uh, our website is makulainc.com. Um, so, so one of the things that I'm involved with, you know, right now with, I'm on the board of directors with our land improvement contractors, and we have an apprentice program that we're getting off the ground. And, and again, we are all talked about the labor shortage that's out there. So we're trying to provide an avenue to get more people involved, you know, as laborers, as equipment operators. Um, so we're, we're reaching out, um, you know, Dale, Dale and I have been working and we've been reaching different towns, different districts, trade schools to kind of promote within the construction industry to help people kind of like, you know, a different avenue because right now there's opportunity in the construction industry. And I'm sure in, in each of, you know, in all of our industries, there's, there's a lot of opportunity right now. We were kind of talking a bit before. So that's one of the things I'm really working hard with now with a bunch of business owners, uh, land improvement contractors, just like ourselves to get people, um, to get people working right now, you know, and give an opportunity to train them, you know, safety training, how to read blueprints, right? How to operate equipment, how to maintain equipment. And, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of people out there. So right now that's one of the initiatives that uh, we're really putting a lot of effort to. So that's where we are. Uh, in our hundredth year, we made it, I made it a personal goal for our uh, Volani Bus family employees to donate and volunteer over 100 hours to our local food banks and other local service uh, centers. And people signed up to volunteer of their own personal time. And we not just met the 100 hour uh, goal, but over doubled that. And of course, naturally, I compensated them for their time, but I wanted it to come from a good place, come from the right place, right? So uh, I called it our Volani Bus uh, 100 Year Volunteers. Um, we do whatever we can, whenever we can, local police, fire, um, and service organizations, just like I'm sure you all do. Uh, yesterday, we were proud to um, donate services to have our veterans um, moved around to over a dozen memorials in, in town in Linden so they could pay tribute to our, our veterans on Veterans Day, which is something we try to do every year with them, but can never do enough. Um, so, uh, website is uh, www.sinzeri.com. Um, we, uh, after COVID or, or in, the, uh, in, the, in the heart of COVID, um, our uh, foundation has been very active with uh, local um, uh, schools and um, doing whatever we can to um, get the students, um, you know, the, the proper uh, equipment, um, school supplies, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of students uh, were not equipped to uh, learn remotely um, mm -hmm. at that time and well, and still very much are. So, you know, doing our best to, you know, try and put a, a little dent um, in, in that uh, initiative. Um, and uh, also working with um, Care Plus, uh, who is a, uh, a foundation that I sit on the board of, and um, they focus on mental health and sub substance um, abuse, and they're just a, an, a great, incredible organization. Um, so just a couple things that, that we're doing right now, but um, can always be doing more, for sure. Well, first, again, I, I, um, this is just a wonderful session. I want to thank you all, the three of you. I want to thank our audience. Uh, we're at the end of time. This goes really quickly, and we will continue to talk. You're doing great work. Keep, uh, keep going, and, and let's all just support family businesses. Let's really try to make, uh, you know, it's the backbone of America, really the backbone of the world. And so, so thank you all for all that you're doing. Uh, take care, and we will see everybody next week. Sue, Sue were you able to get a screenshot? I don't know if Sue's able to get a screenshot, but uh, we'll, we'll get that for all three of their PR. So, um, so, all right. Well, take care. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you, guys. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.